Hi guys, this is for all of American, all of my 11th graders. Um, so this video is going to give you kind of an overview of where we came from in the Romantic era and take us through the Civil War. So this is going to be really helpful background, really helpful context as you set out to conquer the Civil War portfolio this week. Uh, you do not need to write these things down into your notebook. You will be getting your Realism One Sheet here pretty soon, and that will have most everything you need about the Civil War and about the Realism literary movement. So this is just to help you uh, feel oriented and able to tackle our assignment this week as we come back to American literature and move forward out of the Romantic era and into the Civil War and into Realism when everything gets dark and cynical and violent. So our overview, remember we had these romantic beliefs that faith should be placed into man's intuition, into uh, nature, that ultimately all of our souls are good, and that if we can commune with untouched nature, we can start to uncover that goodness inside all of us, that that way lies truth and goodness. And so in 1860, when the Civil War uh, kind of exploded across the country, um, the harsh realities of battle and want and starvation and violence and brother against brother really shatters all of that optimistic faith in humanity. Um, so uh, American society, the American citizens start to see the goodness of man as an illusion, that when we peel back those layers of the physical world, the spiritual layer underneath is not good, it's not whole or pure, it's just broken. And so when we lose that romantic foundation, there are going to be ripples of that effect in society and in literature um, across the arts, both written and visual. There is some really interesting uh, visual art that comes out of this time. Um, so as a whole, America starts to turn towards this evolutionary view of man, man as basically an animal trying to survive without really um, any ingrained moral compass to guide him. Um, and so we turn towards this movement called realism. So looking at literature throughout the war, um, like any big historical event, the Civil War propelled American literature down a new path. Um, I don't think realism would have evolved the way it did without this catalyst. Um, so there are a few ways that the Civil War affected American literature at this time. Uh, slavery became the focus of a lot of New England literary culture. Um, we had the writings and lectures of former slaves getting published, becoming popular. Um, we had the stories of Frederick Douglass, including What to the Slave is the Fourth of July. Um, this is the era when Harriet Beecher Stowe's Uncle Tom's Cabin was released. Um, and while it was fiction, it was like very historical fiction. And so it kind of revealed, ooh, revealed the horrors of slave lives. And um, there's a cool historical anecdote that says when Abraham Lincoln met Harriet Beecher Stowe, he shook her hand and said, so you're the woman who started the war, <laughs> indicating the impact that her novel had on society, on people's beliefs and um, their willingness or their actions in getting involved um, politically. So... Another literary movement um, or kind of entity during this time was the Atlantic Monthly, which was a literary journal. It was abolitionist. It was funded by the New England poets, um, and it was really, really offensive to the South. Um, 
obviously, if it's coming out really, really strong politically on one side, it's really going to fuel that North versus South sectionalism, that us versus them mentality. Um, so the Civil War was considered God's scourge to purge America of slavery by the North. They had this mentality um, that they were casting out evil from the land. Um, and so as they considered this like a holy, just war, um, deaths were rising and rising and rising, um, and the nation was becoming more and more bloody. Um, we can kind of see this belief in the Battle Hymn of the Republic, uh, which gives kind of a scriptural explanation of the war. Uh, this hymn comes from this period, um, and so you might even look into it in your portfolio. But if you guys remember this song, it's the one it kind of goes, mine eyes have seen the coming of the, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord, he has ransomed back the victim of, that one, that's the battle hymn of the Republic, it's from the Civil War. <laughs> okay, um, so, the North kind of entered the war with this holy war mentality um, and blood just was being spilled. You can see over 700,000 casualties um, and there were a lot of new advancements in weapons technology. Um, this is also the period where the photograph um, is becoming more and more available and ubiquitous. So families at home are seeing now for the first time photographs of battlefields, of carnage, of bloodshed. Um, so the cost just rises and rises. And so as the Civil War unfolds battle by battle, there's this fundamental idea that something is wrong with humanity. Um, so a lot of our romantics uh, those foundational beliefs are shattered. They no longer hold any water in this culture that's at war. So Emerson had been spouting the idea that evil was going to vanish when man was in touch with the oversoul. And that is going to obviously lose a lot of its power when you're looking at a battlefield strewn with bodies of brothers fighting against brother because obviously evil is not vanishing. In fact, it's seeming to win. Um, some other shattered beliefs include the divinity of man and nature as a source of truth. So the divinity of man starts to be replaced um, by the belief that man is simply an evolutionary animal. Uh, Darwin's On the Origin of Species is released at about this time, so people start to just change their worldview um, to a far more naturalistic view of man and of humanity. A few other things that change at this time, uh, religion loses its authority in society. The organized church, institutionalized religion, kind of loses a lot of its street cred or its authority. Um, the nation reacts with a lot of how could God allow this? Um, and so as the church kind of lowers in popular opinion, Darwinian evolution, the rise of natural forces kind of take its place. Um, the brutality of man is so obvious that they start to just lean towards this naturalistic perspective that really has lingered since then. Um, Another changing idea is the need for industrial progress. So one of the side effects of this long costly war is that economically a lot of different industries are struggling and so there's a need for technology for progress to fill in a lot of the gaps left by the cost of war uh, financially and manpower and like economically with with goods. Okay, last ones. Um, <laughs> so people at this time kind of lose their patience for the intellectual ramblings of Emerson and Thoreau talking about nature and civil disobedience. They don't really have time anymore for stories that are full of symbols and illusions and exotic settings. Um, in the South Seas or hundreds and hundreds of years ago. In fact, Hawthorne 
said a few things that I think are really kind of appropriate for this. He said, I'm afraid it will be long before romances are in request again. And he says, the present, the immediate, the actual has proven too potent for me. And if we look at those three descriptors, the present, the immediate, and the actual, those three are three like antonyms of everything that the Romantics stood for. So we want to see those three words as really clear descriptors of the realist movement, present, immediate, and actual. People um, in mass started reading newspapers over novels. They wanted news of real occurrences, um, real events rather than fictitious or imagined. Uh, so the romantics then are replaced by writers, many of whom are former journalists. And so they write with that kind of journalistic perspective and journalistic voice who describe fictional worlds realistically. You know, when we read um, the Virginian or when we read the Scarlet Letter, um, we have these very Edenic kind of beautiful descriptions of things um, that don't even feel realistic. They feel lyrical, um, magical, and um, not real. And that's the whole point of how the authors wrote their stories that way. And so that style gets replaced with a very realistic tone with very realistic diction um and it's definitely not a coincidence that many of the writers at this time used to be journalists so we're going to see a lot of that style coming up so this was going to be a little too long for me to scooch into one presentation so I've given you some background on the Civil War, on how it started to change the literary landscape, um, where the Romantics were before the Civil War, and then what we should start to expect next. So find my other video that will be posted shortly to give you all of the deets and information and guidance on how to do this week's assignment, the Civil War Portfolio.